Okay. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about what makes benzene so special. And it's part of something called aromaticity. Essentially, the pi bonds of benzene are exceptionally stable. They don't react with bromine. Well, the pi bonds of cyclooctatetraene, if you had just one equivalent of bromine, they'll re they will react. If you have more than one equivalent of, of bromine, then all of them will start to react as well. And then, as I said in an earlier lecture, who knows what the reaction of cyclobutadiene with bromine would be, because this molecule right here is too unstable. It doesn't exist at um, room temperature, or it doesn't exist really above temperatures greater than minus 70 or so. Even then, it's a little iffy. They have a very difficult time actually isolating this compound. So, each of these has similar resonance to benzene, where we can rotate the pi bonds. But only in benzene is the molecule actually stable. So stable it doesn't react. And this has to do with molecular orbital theory. Now for cyclic arrays of p orbitals, and I should say planar cyclic array of p orbitals, a trick was developed to figure out what the molecular orbital energies are. And this is, trick is called the Frost Muslin Circle Diagrams. Take benzene. It has all p orbitals are in a planar array. They're cyclic. It has six p orbitals. Since it has six p orbitals, you expect to see six molecular orbitals. To predict the energies of these, what you do is you draw the shape of the ring point down, like so. And then you inscribe a circle around that ring. And wherever the ring touches that circle, you have a molecular orbital. So benzene has six molecular orbitals, and these are the energies. Moreover, the circle has a radius of two beta. And then using some trigonometry, you figure out that this is 2 beta, this level is 1 beta, this is minus beta, and this is minus 2 beta. I won't have you 
figure out the geometry, figure out the trigonometry to give you um, these actual energy scores. But it is possible. And then we have six electrons because we have three pi bonds. And equals six electrons. So we fill in the energy starting at the lowest. One, two. Now notice we have two molecular orbitals that have the same energy. These are what are called degenerate orbitals. And then we fill in the electrons in each orbital. One goes here, one goes here, and then we start pairing them, like so. And we've used up all six electrons. To figure out the energy of benzene, do the pi system. we add up the energies of those orbitals multiplied by the electrons. So we have two times two beta plus four times one beta. And that ends up giving you eight beta units of energy. Now, if you recall, the energy of an isolated pi bond is two beta units. So, if we have three pi bonds, three isolated pi bonds, that gives us six beta units of energy of stabilization. But notice benzene has eight. as an extra two beta units of stability. That's like it has an extra pi bond. And that's just because of how the p orbitals are interacting with each other. Now if you want to see what these molecular orbitals look like, I can show them to you. At the lowest energy, you have zero nodes. So there are no nodes in all the p orbitals like this. Okay? Now it's going to get awfully difficult to draw these um, in three dimensions like that. In fact, I did such a poor job with this, it's embarrassing. So what I'm going to do is show you what the top view of this looks like. This is if you are looking down and above. Looks like this. 
and then the lower P orbitals. So that's what it looks like. Now at this level, we have one node. So, what that node looks like we have one node this way we can draw like this again these are top views there's the bottom part of those p orbitals bottom part of these. That's one possibility. The other possibility is if we have the node right down the middle like that. In this case the node is passing through atoms and so you don't have any contribution from those p orbitals to that node. Like so. Now the next has two nuts. And to draw in the two nodes, I'm going to draw one node here and one node here. Get that. There's two nodes. Now the other way of doing two nodes is if we draw one node here and one node here. There's those spear orbitals. And then the top level has three nodes. So we have one node there, one node there, and one node there. something like that. And so the side view
is that. And you can see the three nodes. One, two, three, like so. Okay, so these are the molecular orbitals of benzene. With these are the highest occupied molecular orbitals. There's two of them. And these being the lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals. Now, I'm not going to have you draw the molecular orbitals of benzene or another cyclic compound. I may have you um, organize them in terms of energy, of which ones from lowest to highest, and figure out what the homo and luma are based off of that, or which ones are filled, which ones are unfilled. But you can do that by counting and finding nodes. The lower the node, number of nodes, the lower the energy. Now, if we take a look at cyclobutadiene, we look at the frost circle on this. We end up with four molecular orbitals. Again, the radius of the circle is two beta. So that's just two beta. This is zero beta. This is minus two beta. If you remember, beta is an is actually a negative number, roughly around minus 50 kilojoules per mole. And so we get four molecular orbitals. And we have four pi bonds, sorry, four pi electrons from the two pi bonds. So we fill in the, the electrons, four electrons, two go in here, and then we have two left over, one goes in this one, one goes into that one. Okay. So now if we figure out the stability of this molecule, We have 2 times 2 beta plus 0, well, plus 2 times 0 beta. Because these, each of these, if you figure out the trigonometry of this, are actually at 0 beta. And get 4 beta. You get 4 beta units of stability. Two isolated alkenes, also has two beta units, sorry, four beta units, of stability. That means there is no extra stability. In fact, this is actually quite unstable, because you can imagine these carbons are sp2, they're 
they want to be 120 degrees bond angle, but here they're constrained to 90 degrees. And so this molecule, when it is made and warmed up, it splits apart into two alkynes. And don't worry about this mechanism, that's more of a 345 type topic. But it becomes two alkynes. Also, if you take a look at it, the electrons here aren't paired together. This exists actually as a diradical with two unpaired electrons, further adding to its instability. So the result, cyclobutadiene, is not aromatic. In fact, it is what is referred to as anti-aromatic. Aromatic compounds show exceptional stability. Anti-aromatic compounds show exceptional instability. So, how to find out if a molecule is aromatic? For an aromatic molecule, you must have a planar cyclic array of p orbitals. Number two, you have to have four n plus two number of electrons. Where n is an integer. By integer I mean zero, one, two, three. So this is a, just a way of remembering the number of electrons. So four n plus two equals two, four, six, not four, excuse me. When n equals zero, four n plus two is two. When n equals one, four n plus two is six. When n equals two, a plus two is 10, 14, 18, these are the right numbers. 22, that kind of thing. It's a way of remembering these numbers. For n numbers are 0, 4, 8, 12 multiples of 12, uh, sorry, multiples of 4. If it's 4n, then it's anti aromatic. So if we take a look at molecules. Here's an example of a cation that's actually stable enough to be put in a bottle, a carbocation. This is called tropilium. It has an array of p orbitals.
and so it's aromatic. There's six electrons. Two for each pi bond, and then the carbocation is just an empty p orbital. Another example is cyclopenta dienyl anion. It has six electrons. It too is aromatic. Two, four, six electrons. It's aromatic, it has a complete array. Cyclopentene. is neither aromatic nor anti-aromatic. Because that carbon is sp3 hybridized. However, this hydrogen right here is acidic, pKa, roughly around um, 15 or 16 or so. A carbon, atta a hydrogen attached to an sp3 carbon, is, is that acidic? Normally they aren't. It's that acidic because of the product. The anion is aromatic. We have molecules like this, fused rings together. Draw, drawing a resonance structure where the pi bonds are on the periphery. And then count them up. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 10 electrons. 4n plus 2 equals 10. n equals 2. That's an integer. So this is aromatic. And you don't have to relegate yourselves to um, just carbons. You can go with nitrogens, oxygens. Now, you only count one of the lone pairs on that oxygen because only one of those p orbitals are in the array with the pi system. You don't count this lone pair in pyridine because that is in an sp2 orbital. So each of these has six pi electrons. Each of those is aromatic. Now, one of the molecules I started the lecture off at was this molecule here. This molecule has eight pi electrons. But it is not anti-aromatic. 
That's because anti-aromatic compounds are very unstable and molecules don't like being anti-aromatic. And so as a result, molecules will twist and change their geometry so to avoid that. And the way this does it is it twists its geometry. So this molecule is not planar. It's sort of cup-shaped. Okay. So. What I want you to be able to do is be able to recognize from this what molecules are aromatic. And if a molecule can be aromatic, it will choose to be aromatic. And that's pretty much everything that we have. So Wednesday and and Friday, I'm pretty much just gonna do review problems for those. And that's all we've got.